now we have views from the server. Gary and Herman, who works for Silverstripe um, and is a full stack developer, um, and he's going to talk about views for us. Thanks. Hello. Do I get do I get slides? No. There we go. Uh, hello. This is a talk called Views from the Server, which is a really terrible reference to a rap artist. Uh, we'll move on. <laughs> I have a clicker, so I should use the clicker instead of the arrow keys on my computer. So, hello. I'm Garion from Silverstripe. Uh, I wouldn't consider myself a full stack developer. I, I do some back end and some front end, and I've done some ops stuff in the past, but it's all just minute stuff. It doesn't matter. Um, first things first, uh, I'm not yelling at you. My, all, my, all my slides are in caps, but it's, it's a design choice. Not, I'm not, not going to yell. Um, don't worry about it. Don't, don't, do, don't feel worried. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the one that's supposed to worry. <laughs> so what is this? Uh, today, I thought I would take you through a few things um, that I've been quite interested in uh, recently. Uh, the first one is Vue. Uh, it's, a, it's a JavaScript library that's been gaining a bit of traction in the world now, um, and it's, 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 quite, it's quite cool. Uh, the next one is Nuxt. Nuxt follows on from Vue. It's, 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 it, it sort of complements it quite well and allows you to do server-side rendered applications in, in Vue. Uh, and then I'm also going to throw a little bit of socket I.O. In the, in the end just, just to mix it up a little, make it a little bit cooler. Uh, so let's, let's build some forums, because everyone uses forums today, right? Who, who uses a forum like actively? More people than I was expecting, so OK. <laughs> um, it's a really simple piece of software to, to just run demos in. Cool. <laughs> so step one, view. What is it? Vue is uh, a JavaScript library um, that, that it, it's, it's basically a view layer for, uh, view layer for uh, your, your, your generally your single page applications. Um, but you can use it pretty much anywhere. Like you could throw it in for like a tiny widget in the side, side of your, your, your website or anything. Um, it's, it, it just, I've, I've heard it referenced as the jQuery killer. Um, it, it definitely can um, replace jQuery in a lot of situations and make things a little bit cleaner and more, more concise. Um, and it has a little bit of like built-in state management that, um, that that makes it a little bit easier to like just understand what your application's state is, like um, instead of just manually editing data attributes on on your on your HTML. Um, so it starts out really simple. There's some code here. Uh, so on the left, we have uh, a very simple view application. It's binding to the uh, message app element. Um, we've got a couple of pieces of, of state in there to, to maintain like, all of the messages that we have uh, and to maintain the state of the editor field. Uh, and we have a single method, a method in there, which allows you to you know, actually submit that, that field uh, and, and, and push, push the contents of it into, into the messages array. Uh, and then you've got the HTML that supports that. So um, you might sort of, if, if you've used Angular 1 before, um, that lo might look a little bit familiar, the, the v4 we've got in there. That's just a, a loop. Um, a lot of that syntax is, is quite similar to Angular 1. Um, and then we have a v model there, which basically just sets up two-way binding um, to, to the editor uh, state field. Um, and a click event, which runs that method. Very straightforward. Um, then it gets better. So uh, you can write this in ES5 and just throw it in your browser and it'll go. Or you can introduce something like Webpack or, or Browserify uh, and use view loader. Um, and you can get single file components. So these. Uh, so, so, so we'll go back to the previous example, but using a component now. So you can see we move to a component called message list. It's shortened so that it would actually fit on the screen. <laughs> um, and, and, and you can see we're now importing uh, the message list component from, from a separate file uh, with, with the view extension. Um, 
So what does that file look like? It looks like this. That's one file. I've split it into two so that it can fit on the screen reasonably well. Um, but these are the three main components, right? So you've got the logic for your component, which uh, it states that it, it takes a prop of messages. So that's that messages array that we had before. Um, and we also have a computed value in there, which is a really cool feature of, of Vue, where um, Vue will pick up anything that you, that you use in that method, like in this example, uh, the, the messages uh, property. Uh, and as soon as that messages property changes, it will recompute that value. Uh, and then you can just use that in your template. So you got the template there, still got that same loop in there, and now we're showing the message count. Um, and you can even throw styles in here. Like, uh, they can be scoped specifically to this component. If you'll like, handle all the, the madness that is involved in, in making this scoped. <laughs> um, and you can use SAS or less or anything with it. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty sweet. Uh, so, pretty good, right? Um, yeah, I think we're done here. Views, views pretty good. Use it. All right, <laughs> no worries. I'm going to get off stage. Not yet. <laughs> There's a few more things to cover. Uh, so, the second one is Nuxt. So, what is it? So, Nuxt uh, is, is a server side rendering framework for Vue. Um, so, server side rendering, um, probably heard of that before. It's kind of in the name, right? Like you, you render the whole thing on the server. Um, but most single page applications today don't do this. They, they use client side rendering, which is fine, it works, but it's, it's not ideal. So there's a few steps in a client side rendered application to take, right? So you download your HTML that uh, load, it like gives you all of your CSS and your JavaScript. So you go and load that, and then you get your JavaScript, cool, you've got your JavaScript down. Now your JavaScript has to run and figure out like, where you are in your application if you have like, a bunch of different routes. Um, has to figure out from that route like, what information you need to display the page. Meanwhile, the client's sitting here seeing loading. <laughs> um, and then it gets to actually render the, the UI. Um, so not, not super great. It's not, it's not the best experience. Um, Server-side rendering is super fast. It's just, it's just way faster. Like, when you have to call off to an API in your single page application, um, that takes some time. Um, generally speaking, your application server is going to be closer in proximity, like physically, <laughs> and, and have a bigger pipe to your API backend. So it can, it can talk to it faster. Um, you get the UI back immediately. Uh, so, so rather than seeing a little loading screen, waiting for the, the, the information to come in, it's all just pre-rendered, and it just once it hits the, the browser, it's there. Um, and it gives you legit URLs out of the box, in the, uh, particularly in the case of Nuxt. Um, in a single-page application, um, it can be a little bit difficult to get good uh, URL structure going. A lot of times, you have like hash URLs. Um, you know, like the, the, the browser like history APIs are like always improving, and so some of the time, like newer applications, you, you, you can do a little bit better job, but it's, it's hard. Um, so Nuxt is magic. So when I say magic, I don't mean it's like a little dusting of, of, of magic on top. It's, you're, you're, you're gonna drown in it. It's just everything. <laughs> um, so one of the core, core features of Nuxt is that you write your components, your, your pages, your layouts once, and they render twice. They render on the server, and they, they'll also render on the client. So they render on the server first when, uh, when, a, um, when a client originally comes to the site, and then from then on, they'll render client side so that there's no like, reloading of the page or any, any, any weirdness. Um, uh, key, key part of this is, is that you have component-based routing. So what does this mean? It means those components that we saw earlier, well, the component that we saw earlier, um, is now sort of used as the page. Um, so here we can see that the index.view will, will, will map to just the, the root of your site, and then you can use an underscore in the front of the name of the, the component to to have variables in there, and so that variable will be passed into your component so that it has some context of what it's supposed to be doing. 
Um, and then Nux just takes care of like actually generating these routes and, 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 and routing you to them. Um, and so now <laughs> we have, uh, we're just pulling in Axios to, to do an API request to get the data. Um, we, we pull in, this is, this is the boards um, view, for example. Um, we pull in the boards from our API. Uh, again, this is one component that renders twice, so either the server will be pulling in from the API or the client will. Um, and then it's pretty much the same syntax. Like, uh, we have a Nuxt link in there to, to actually route around the application so that, that Nuxt can take care of, of that routing. Um, but it's all, it's all very straightforward. Um, it just it does so much scaffolding. Um, you can you can do all sorts of stuff. Like you can have like your CSS. If if you didn't want to do CSS inside your components, you can have a completely separate like CSS layout and just tell Nuxt where that is and it'll render it. Um, I think you can use different languages um, like CoffeeScript if you're that way inclined for some reason. Um, there's just there's just a bunch of stuff um, during during dev. It, it does hot module reloading, all that all that craziness. Um, oh, we're done. <laughs> we got view. We got next. We're good. Um, but there's one little issue. Um, currently, based on the example that I showed, um, the state for each page is located inside that page. Like it only stays inside that that one component. Um, and this is fine for a very small application, um, but it's better to have all of your state in one place uh, so that you can actually cache like the different like uh, results, and th therefore like when you go back to a page, you don't have to load from the API every single time, that sort of thing. Um, and then if you've got like user specific information, um, it, it gets a little bit tricky to like pass it around different components if you don't have centralized view uh, um, state. So so let's, let's introduce Vue X. So Vue X solves this problem. It's global state management. Um, has anyone seen Redux? Anyone, anyone use that? Yep. Cool. We're done. <laughs> Not quite. It's, it's basically the same thing, though. Um, so you, you have two parts. You have your state and your mutations. So here's an example. Completely unrelated to a farm. You wouldn't use this code in a farm because it's a counter. <laughs> um, so it sets up a single bit of state for a counter and a mutation for that counter that increases the counter. And then in your, uh, in your component, you can call the increment command. Is that, can everyone see that okay? Is that like big enough? Probably should ask that sooner, yeah. Not much I can do about now. <laughs> um, so you can call uh, increment, it'll, it'll, it'll uh, push up the number of the counter, and you can access that, that state via, via that uh, syntax as well. Um, so Nuxt, as part of its big scaffolding deal, will start this for you. If you put your state, um, your, 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 your Vuex information um, in a particular file, in a particular place, it will just spin up Vuex uh, for you, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, and it also supports modules mode, which means you can split out different parts of your state that aren't related to each other. Like, for example, you could split the cache of all of the results for, for each page from the user information um, just by putting them in a slightly different place. Uh, and now they're namespaced automatically. So if you call uh, <laughs> this store commit cache, uh, sorry, uh, user slash set name, now you're, now you're calling set name within the user part of your, of your state. So very straightforward. Um, and the same thing for the cache. So this is what we're doing as a, as a solution to, to keep that cache centralized. We are going and grabbing the stuff from the API, but then we're putting it directly in the cache instead of like keeping it, keeping it locally. Um, okay, now we're done. Mm, not, not quite. There's one more thing. Uh, we have socket.io. So socket.io, who has heard of socket.io? Come on. <laughs> yes. OK, Socket.io has been around for a very long time. It sort of hit 1.0, I think, like a year or two ago, and then stopped because it was done, pretty much. Like, it, it, just, it just goes now. Um, Socket.io means that we can do it live. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So instead of the, the user having to sort of reload the page to see their new posts that other people have replied with, or multiple people typing a message at the same time unawares of each other, um, we, can, we can tell the user that, that different things are happening um, while they're just on the page. Um, live state is awesome. Like it, it's, it's better user experience. They can see what's going on a lot better. Uh, it keeps people focused. Um, you know, like if you're on Reddit, you might go over to another tab and, and, and do some other stuff instead of like keeping an eye on your conversation. Whereas if you're on Facebook Messenger, you can see that someone is replying. Um, so you, you keep a lot more focus. So super great. Um, so you'd have to do a little bit of hacking to get Socket.io to work with Nuxt. It's not. I, I don't know if it's hacking. It's sort of like you just change the the, the place that Nuxt starts. Um, there's a little bit of extra boilerplate that I'm not showing here because it would be like, sort of just annoying and erroneous. Um, but you throw this in index.js in the, in the base of your project. It's pretty straightforward. You, you're, you're, you're listening on uh, uh, some different uh, uh, events that the, the client can send and then doing things based on them. And then now you can, when you're typing a message in, in your post, um, you can watch that, that, that field that you're, you're typing into, and when, you, when it's got something in it, you can send a I started typing event, and then that gets transmitted down to all of the other clients. Um, this is not the most brilliant code. You'll notice that there's no sort of like debounce or anything. It's going gonna, it's gonna <laughs> to call uh, Socket.io and annoy all the other clients every single time you type a character. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a demo. It's fine. <laughs> Um, and you can also see the other side there, right? Like, uh, so before mount is just, a, just a, an event that gets called on, on, your, on your view component when it's spinning up. Uh, and so that's where we're doing the binding to, to see, um, you know, like if someone starts, uh, sends a reply, we actually do something about it. Um, so the thing with socket.io is that, in my opinion, you should apply it in small doses. Like, don't use it completely for everything. Um, don't reinvent HTTP. HTTP is there for a reason. Um, if, you're, if you turn it into the single transport layer for your application, um, you kind of lose some of the benefits of HTTP, like, like the ability to cache things, all that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, let's do a demo. <laughs> um, while I showed, you know, like five sort of slides of code there, I actually wrote an entire thing in the background um, in my mind, and now I've transferred it to the computer. So. We can actually see a demo of it. Um, so I, I, I always forget what these guys are called, but, but they have a very good saying, which is, show me what you got. Uh, so I will show you what I got. Cool. <laughs> no, well, there you go. <laughs> that was supposed to come off on my screen so that I could say the right thing, and oh well. <laughs> Cool. So, so a super quick, quick example. Um, you can tell in Nuxt whether you have loaded from the server side or the client side. So in this example, I've just loaded the site. You know, I refresh. Yep, I loaded server side. But if I uh, click around a little, go over to boards and come back, that loaded client side. So you, you can get an idea of, of like how it worked. If you need to do like client or server specific things, generally you shouldn't need to, but like there might be some sort of weird stuff with authentication or that sort of thing. Um, you, you have that ability. Uh, so we have the boards sort of component here. It's pretty straightforward. It's, it's basically what I showed you in the, in the code slides. It, it lists out some boards that we have. Sweet. Let's go into this one. Uh, I used this thread as an example because it's something that I've struggled with. So sweet. Uh, and so, yeah, again, this is all like rendering client side now because, because we don't need to talk to the server again. We just talk directly to the API, get the data down 100%, sweet. But if we reload, you can just go to the same place. It still works. Sweet. Um, so now down here, we can, uh, we can write a reply. But real quick, I just want to pop in here and show you the view development tools. The view development tools are really great. I, I think pretty much every major framework has decent developer tools now, but, but the view ones are good. Like, they're just good. <laughs> um, so we can see here um, it's a little bit more complicated in a Nuxt application. There's a little bit more state going on. Um, 
but you can see all of the different sort of bits of information that we have to work with. We've got the posts there, and we can see what's going on there. Um, it also has, uh, so if we change the state um, via Vuex, we'll, we'll get the same sort of thing as in Redux. You can, you can see each, each step, each, each commit, what the result is, this sort of thing, cool. Um, Socket IO, so if we do this nice and create a new version of this page, nice, and then put over the other side, nice, okay. So we can put our name in here. Hello, that's not a good name, oh well. <laughs> uh, and then we can start typing a message, and you'll see over here as I start typing a message that someone is typing a message. Yay, it just worked. My demo worked, good. Uh, <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I can just put a reply in here, like, cool. And then that updates the other client immediately. All in line, 100%, cool. <laughs> Sweet. So. So the next step is that you're probably going to want to deploy this Nuxt application that you've built, because it's super cool and you want to show it to everybody. So you've got a couple of options with Nuxt. Um, you can use Now. Uh, has anyone heard of Now before? OK, nice. <laughs> uh, now is basically um, this super straightforward uh, deployment thing. Um, uh, it's like a, like, a, like, a, like a hosting platform that allows you to do this. <laughs> So if you type now inside your project, and obviously you've set up now in the background, it, it, it knows who you are, um, it will deploy your application and give you a URL to view it at. That's it. It just goes. Um, so that's, that's probably the easiest way to deploy a Nux application. Um, you also, though, have an option of deploying it to S3. Um, so a caveat to this is that uh, you have, so, so in the, in the and the routes, you might have like variables, right, where, where, where you, you have a particular post ID or that sort of thing. Um, so there is there's a way to set up Nux so that it, it can tell all of the possible variations of that, that variable uh, and statically cache them all. Like, so it'll, it'll build out a whole, whole uh, like static HTML version of the site. And then you can push that up to S3, and it just goes. Um, so that's pretty sweet. Um, Caveats, uh, Nux is not completely end-to-end. -end. It does a lot of the stuff for you, but there's a couple of big gotchas. One is the API, obviously. Uh, there's, there's no way to have your, well, there is a way to have your API hosted on the same server, but, but it, doesn't so, like, give, it doesn't give you any support for that. Uh, it is built on top of Express, though, so you can, you can hook into Express and write your API there if you wanted to. I've just you know, had a, have my API off in a different place. It's a little bit cleaner. Um, it doesn't really handle auth. It doesn't have its own authentication gear. Again, it's built on top of Express, so you could use uh, the session stuff from Express. Or there are plenty of like third-party sort of like authentication as a service uh, sort of setups that you can do now. Um, so it's it's not too big a concern. But yeah, you just have to sort of manage that separately. Um, and probably the biggest one, uh, magic is not, not always a good thing. Um, you know, if something goes wrong with Nuxt itself. This is, this is a common thing and like, like uh, well, not common as in like it happens all the time. <laughs> I didn't run into any issues myself, but uh, you know, like when an when a application framework is very magic um, and something goes wrong internally, it's very hard to, to fix it yourself. Um, and you might end up in this guy's situation. He's actually kind of drowning. Uh, <laughs> not ideal. Uh, so to conclude, you should definitely try Vue. If nothing else from this talk, you should definitely try Vue. Uh, it's, a, it's really great. It can replace jQuery in all the situations where uh, on, on like smaller applications that are kind of old. Um, you can just start mixing it in and, and, and seeing how it goes. Um, give Nux to go as well if, if you sort of want to build a whole thing in Vue. Um, if you prefer React, uh, fair enough. <laughs> there's, there's some big similarities. Um, I personally prefer Vue. It gives you a little bit more to go with, but um, sure, fair enough. Try next. Uh, inadvertently. Um, Nux was actually built 
or, or conceived a few hours after Next was. Next is basically the React version of, of, of Nuxt. It, it is server-side rendering applications in, in React. So, so give this a go if you actually want to try SSR, but you don't want to learn a whole new tool. Um, and try Socket.io. Like, it's been around for ages, but I just I don't see it enough. <laughs> it's really good. Give it a go. <laughs> um, and you know, in the old adage of, of the JavaScript community, never stop, never stopping. Keep building way too many things. <laughs> so thanks. Great. Very good. I didn't mind the shouting even. Any questions? We've got time for one. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I've forgotten. <laughs> Need the mic. Um, pretty simple one. Um, is your uh, demo app up here anywhere? Because I'd love to see the uh, source for that whole thing. Yes, I totally should have mentioned this. Uh, I, after this talk, like 30 seconds after this talk, that's a pretty bold claim, I will put this up open source. It's currently private on GitHub, but it'll be there. time it. So, sweet. <laughs> uh, one more, maybe? No? Okay, so maybe we just have another round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> 